As someone who works with beginner fly anglers on a daily basis, I can tell you without any shadow of a doubt that if you can develop a solid understanding of fly line, leaders, and tippet, it's gonna help you put more fish in the net. Whether you're fishing dry flies, nymphs, or streamers, fly line, leaders, and tippet are the building blocks of any rig. So getting more familiar with the characteristics and the different options for each component, it's gonna help you put more fish in the net for one main reason. It's gonna help you improve the way you present your flies to a fish. Whether that means landing your fly more delicately on the water, casting further, getting your nymphs to the right depth, or achieving a drag-free drift. You'll be able to accomplish all of this and more with a basic understanding of each component in the fly line system. Here we have our rod and reel. Attached directly to the reel, we have backing. Attached to our backing is fly line. Attached to our fly line is a leader. And we may attach that leader directly to a fly or use tippet to create different rigs. Now let's cover each of these in detail. Backing has two main purposes. Number one, it fills real space. Fly line is only about 80 to 100 feet long. So if you were to put that directly on the reel, there would be a lot of empty space. It also increases the arbor, meaning you're able to bring in more line with every turn of the reel when that space is filled with backing. And then number two is big fish insurance. Again, fly line, it's only about 80 to 100 feet long. So if you have a fish run on you and take out more than 100 feet of fly line, you've either got to let go of the rod or dive in and take a swim. This is a bit more realistic if you're fishing saltwater or maybe if you hook into that trout of a lifetime. Now, obviously, it depends on the reel, but here's a table of generally accepted backing size and lengths. The next component in our fly line system is fly line. When it comes to choosing fly line, there are six characteristics that we need to consider. Number one is the weight. So if we wanted to get a little bit technical, maybe dive into the weeds a little bit, we would distinguish them in terms of grains. So X number of grains equals a one weight, X number of grains equals a two weight, X number of grains equals a three weight. But over the years with a variety of different line manufacturers and personal preference coming into play, grains have gotten a little bit messy. And so to simplify things, we can actually disregard grains altogether and just focus on the weight. And that's gonna make things really easy. So a one weight line is made to cast a one weight rod. A two weight line is made to cast a two weight rod. And so on. And so this brings up a common question. Let's say you just picked up a brand new five weight rod, but you have some four weight line on a reel laying around. Can you cast that four weight line on a five weight rod? Yes. It just might not be a super enjoyable experience. Generally, if you underweight that rod, so just like in our example, if I use four weight line on a five weight rod, that rod isn't gonna bend enough. And so more effort is needed, especially on short casts. Once you have a lot of line out of that rod, there's enough mass to bend that rod and make the cast. But if you're casting at short distances, you're gonna have to put in a lot more effort. And then if we go the opposite way and I overweight a fly rod, so let's say I use a six weight line on my five weight, the rod becomes slower, meaning it loads a bit more and I've got to wait longer on the back cast. And this might cause issues with casting far away. And so long story short, if I wanna maximize the performance of both my fly line and my fly rod, I'm gonna match the weight of that fly line to the weight of my rod. All right, characteristic number two is taper. When something is tapered, it simply means a gradual progression from thick on one end to thin on the other. In fact, when you look at the entire fly fishing setup as a whole, it's tapered thick to thin. The rod is tapered, the fly line is tapered, the leader is tapered, and this taper allows for energy to be transferred in the most efficient way possible. From the rod, through the fly line, and down the leader, ultimately sending our fly out to the target. 
And when I say energy transfer, I want you to immediately think of turning over that fly line or completely straightening out that fly line, leader, and tip. And when it comes to fly line, there are two general taper designs. Number one is double taper, or you'll see it on boxes as DT. This type of fly line does have limited uses, but it's a good place to start our discussion. And as the name implies, a double taper has two tapers. It has a rear taper, so one in the back, and then it has a belly, which is the thickest part of the fly line. It's the mass of the fly line. It's pretty consistent throughout the entire line. And then we have a front taper. And then the second type of fly line that we have is weight forward. And this is by far the vast majority of fly lines. And so we have our backing that's attached to our fly line. And then there's a section of running line, a rear taper, a belly, which is that mass, the thickest part of the fly line. And that's positioned more to the front of the line. And then we have a front taper. And so just to clarify one more time, with a double taper, the thickest part of the fly line, that mass is pretty consistent throughout the entire line. Versus a weight forward, that mass, the thickest part of the fly line, is positioned towards the front of the line. And so each of these types of fly line has their pros and cons. With the double taper, the pros are improved accuracy. That fly line is more stable in the air. It's easier to roll cast. With more of that belly on the water, you're able to have better mending control. You can cast dry flies with a more delicate presentation. And something pretty unique about a double taper fly line is let's say you use that front taper you use it for a while, it starts to crack, it gets a little dirty. You can actually take that fly line off, flip it around and use the rear taper and it's exactly the same as the front taper. So you've actually doubled the lifespan of your fly line. And so with this list, you're probably saying, well, why would I wanna use anything else? This sounds amazing. It does have its cons. Double taper fly lines, you can't cast them as far. So decrease distance. It has limited wind resistance and you're gonna have issues turning over larger flies. And so double taper fly lines are great for delicate, short range dry fly fishing. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of the most common type of fly line, weight forward. The pros, increased distance. You're able to cast this line a lot further. It's able to carry larger flies to target. You're able to load that rod with minimal false casts and you have greater wind resistance. And then the cons, you have decreased delicacy. So unless you're fishing really small, delicate dry flies, the weight forward line is gonna be used in the vast majority of situations. Now, before we dive into the weeds on this, let me be very clear. There are fly lines for every scenario and every situation under the sun. For example, let's say a manufacturer wants to make a specialized streamer line. They'll take that front taper and they'll shorten it and they'll make it heavier. And that's gonna allow for that fly line to turn over those bigger, heavier streamers. I'll just throw this out there. I've been fly fishing for close to 20 years now, mostly for trout. And about 95% of that time, I've used just a standard weight forward fly line without any issues. Now, don't get me wrong. Specialized fly lines, they have their place especially if you're going after really big fish or fishing saltwater, or even if you're not and you just wanna have a fly line for every single specific situation, that's awesome. Just personally, I prefer to keep things simple. So as a beginner, if I had my standard nine foot five weight rod, I would pick up a box of fly line that was WF5F. WF for weight forward, five for five weight, cause I'm pairing it with my five weight rod and F for floating which is what we're gonna talk about next. Characteristic number three, density. When it comes to density, fly line falls in the three categories. The most common is floating. As the name suggests, it floats completely, which usually brings up a common concern. What if I wanna fish nymphs and streamers under the water surface? Do I need to get a different fly line? No, your fly line floats on the water, but your leader and flies can sink your fly line just acts as an anchor point on the surface. And so this is the most popular, the most used, the most versatile type of fly line. And so if you only have one fly line, floating is the way to go. Sinking fly line, as the name suggests, sinks completely. 
And so you use this for still water, so deep lakes, you wanna get it down 20 to 30 feet deep. Yes, you can fish lakes and ponds with floating fly line. You might just have to extend your leader a little bit. It's when you're getting into that 15, 20, 30 feet deep where the sinking fly line might come in handy. And then we get into the intermediate fly lines, which could be something like a sink tip line where part of the line is floating and then the last little tip section sinks. And this helps for situations when you need to get streamers and nymphs down to a certain depth that just isn't possible with a pure floating fly line. All right, characteristic number four is length. This is pretty simple. Most fly lines are about 80 to 100 feet in length, and it's just based off of manufacturer's preference. Fly line characteristic number five is color. The color of your fly line is more personal preference than anything. Yes, you will have anglers argue that a more neutral colored fly line will blend in or camouflage with the water. I have a hard time believing it makes that big of a difference. And if your fly line is on top of fish, that shadow or that silhouette from the fly line, it's probably gonna spook the fish a lot faster than the color of the fly line itself. Fly line characteristic number six is a welded loop. Most fly lines these days come with a welded loop on them. This makes it really easy to switch out leaders using a loop to loop connection or handshake. But if your fly line doesn't have a welded loop, all you have to do is learn the nail knot and you're in business. So a welded loop, it's more convenience than anything. Once you decide which fly line is right for you, the next component in our fly line system is a leader. This is one of the most overlooked pieces of fly fishing gear and something that anglers mess up all the time. The leader is composed of three parts. You have your butt section, which is the thick end, a tapered section, which gradually decreases in diameter until you reach the thin end, also known as the tippet section. And each leader has two characteristics. Number one is the diameter or how thick the leader is. If you look at a leader package or a spool of tippet, you'll notice a number next to the letter X. This is the X rating system. In short, the smaller the number, the thicker diameter the leader or tippet. The bigger the number, the thinner diameter the leader or tippet. So a 6X leader is thinner than a 4X leader, which is thinner than a 2X leader. And before we talk about how to know which size leader we should use, we'll go over characteristic number two, which is length. The general rule is to use a leader that is about the same length of your rod. But there are times when you wanna shorten or lengthen your leader. Let's say you've got some bigger flies, maybe a, a streamer or a terrestrial, and you need a little extra power to turn them over. You might shorten your leader. But let's say you're dealing with some really picky fish. They can hear you get out of the truck see you tying on that fly from a mile away and feel every single footstep as you get closer and closer to the riverbank. Okay, I may have gotten a little carried away with that description, but sometimes it feels like that, okay? But maybe they're a bit shy, they get fish too on the regular, or they're just super weary of any drag on your dry flies. It might be a good idea to lengthen that leader a couple. All right, now we're getting into the good stuff. This is a question we get all the time. How do I choose the correct size leader or tippet? And I've broken this down into three plans with plan A being the most important and plan C, it's still important, but not as important as plan A. Plan A, you'll use this the majority of the time and that's choosing your leader and tippet based off of size, weight, or wind resistance of the fly. Now you're gonna wanna pay attention because this is one of the most common mistakes made by beginner and even some intermediate anglers. Remember when we talked about energy transfer or that fly turning over? If you're using too small of a leader or tippet, the energy is gonna go from your arm to the fly rod, from that fly rod into the fly line, and that energy might even make it a little ways down the leader, but at some point, it's not gonna have enough mass, it's not gonna have enough energy to keep it going, and that leader's just gonna fizzle out and your fly is gonna fall flat in the process. So when choosing a leader or tippet, we need to make sure that it's thick enough to support that energy transfer 
throughout the entirety of the leader so that it can lay out all the way and put that fly on target. But the opposite is also true. Let's say I'm using a 2X leader on a size 20 dry fly. That super thick leader is gonna transfer too much energy and my little dry fly is gonna hit the water like it's doing a belly flop. As a general rule of thumb, when you're not quite sure what size leader or tippet to use, just take the size of the fly. So here I've got a size 12 parachute atoms. I take 12 and divide it by three or four. So 12 divided by three is 4X or 12 divided by four is 3X. Then we'll take weight and wind resistance into consideration. Because this is a lighter dry fly, I think we could go with 4X, the smaller tippet, and be just fine. Now, if it was a size 12 hair's ear, it's got that bead, it's a bit heavier, so we might need a little extra oomph to turn that fly over. So I might go with the thicker 3X for that one. And the same thing for a hopper pattern, like a chubby Chernobyl. It's not very heavy, but because of its shape, the wind resistance can hold it back. So if I have a size 12, I also might go with the 3X on that one. As you start experimenting with different sizes and how it affects the casting, choosing the right size leader and tippet, it's gonna become intuitive. But there are times when we're gonna break this general rule, and that's when we'll move to plan B. If you're on a highly pressured tailwater where fish see anglers and flies thrown at them all day long, sometimes the fish can become leader or tippet shy. This is gonna require you to perfect your presentation. And so if we're in this situation, we're probably gonna have to cast from further away, so we'll need to lengthen that leader and we'll need a more delicate presentation. So instead of using that 4X, we might step it down to a five or maybe even a six X. And that's gonna help your leader land softer on the water and promote a drag free drift. And so yes, lengthening your leader and stepping down your tippet, that's gonna make it a lot harder to cast that leader. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to catch that fish. In fact, last week I ran into this exact situation. There was this big fish, slow moving water, he was sipping a merger, so I tied on a little size 16 PMD emerger, added some 5X tippet to the end of my leader. It was really long and it took everything I had. I threw this perfect cast in there right in front of him. He came up, sipped that emerger fly. I set the hook and then he figured out what was happening. He gave me one good head shake and snap, he broke off my fly. And so this leads us into plan C size of the fish. So if you're fishing rivers with really big trout or super strong currents, that 6X leader, it's probably not gonna hold up under the strain of fighting a fish. And so if possible, you'll wanna up your leader size. But keep in mind, this is going to negatively impact your presentation. On a leader or tippet package, they'll display the breaking strength of that tippet. Just know it's mostly based off diameter. And so the thicker the tippet, the stronger the tippet. And so choosing the right size leader and tippet, it's finding this right balance of being thick enough that I can transfer that energy and turn over that fly, thin enough that I can present that fly in a delicate manner, and then not too thin that I break it off when fighting a fish or snagging the bottom. So now let's talk about the last part of our fly line system, and that's tippet. So when you pull a fresh new leader out of the package, you can just attach that leader to your fly line, tie your fly onto the end of the leader, and you're ready to fish. But let's say you change your flies, so you snip off a bit of that leader, you catch a couple trees, you change your fly again, the tippet section of your leader gets shorter and shorter until eventually the end that you're tying onto your fly, it's a bit too thick. And so at this point, you have two options. You can either pull a brand new leader out of the package and do the same thing, but going through a bunch of leaders can start to get a bit expensive and it's just not necessary. And so an option two is we can extend the life of that leader by grabbing a spool of tippet. Unlike leaders, tippet isn't tapered. In fly fishing jargon, you'll hear it called monofilament, mono meaning one. 
so it's just one diameter from end to end. You'll use tippet for two different things. Like I said, extending the life of the leader and setting up different rigs. For example, if I wanted to set up a dry dropper rig, I would attach my dry fly to the end of my leader, then some tippet to the bend of the dry fly's hook, then the other end to a nymph. That way I can fish a dry fly riding on the water surface and a nymph underneath, working two water columns at the same time. And it's the same regardless of whatever rig you're setting up. Double dry, standard nymph, streamer, you're going to use Tippet to build each one of those out. And the last thing to know about Tippet is that there are two types, nylon, which some people just call mono, and fluorocarbon. Each is made of different materials, so each has their own unique characteristics, and each has their pros and cons. Nylon, the pros. It floats, it knots well, and is less expensive. The cons, it floats, so this isn't always ideal, maybe if you're fishing with nymphs or streamers, and it's prone to abrasions. So if you get snagged up on the bottom or if you get caught on a branch, it has the tendency to break easy. And then fluorocarbon, the pros, it sinks, it's super strong, it's abrasion resistant, and because of its refractive index or the way that light shines through it, some anglers argue that it's nearly invisible in water. And then the cons, it's a harder material, so sometimes knotting can be difficult, and it's a lot more expensive. Personally, I use nylon when I'm fishing with dry flies. Number one, it floats, and number two, it seems to bend or move a little bit more, and so it helps promote a more delicate presentation. And then fluorocarbon, I use when I'm fishing with nymphs and streamers, it sinks, and it's super strong, so if I get like snagged up on the bottom, it doesn't seem to break off as easily as nylon tippet. Now this is just what I like to do. You'll find that every angler has their personal preference. And if you just use nylon, or if you just use fluorocarbon for everything, you're not gonna have any problems and you're gonna catch plenty of fish. Now that we have a solid foundation of fly line leaders and tippet, you might be wondering, well, what knots are best to tie all this stuff together? Well, that's exactly what we'll talk about in the next video. The three knots every fly angler needs to know. Check it out right here.